Hello. Hello. You're a little blurry today. We'll just have to deal with that. I think we've got some bandwidth I issues. Quickly. Yeah. So try to sit still <laughs> oh, as we talk here. So today is July 9th, 2023. It's been two weeks since we did a video. There's still a lot going on, on the internet, a lot of weird stuff. Um, but today we, we talked a little bit earlier. We want to focus on Reddit today. And this is a Reddit lovers edition. Uh, we're going to get into some very interesting things later on about what's happening on Reddit right now and why you should care. Um, but let's, so let's just talk a little bit about Reddit. I'll give it a little bit of an introduction. I looked it up um, this morning. <laughs> So it's the number six website on the internet um, in the United States. It's number 10 in the world and it's number six in the United States. 50 to 60% of its traffic is in North America. So that gives you an idea of what, you know, where Reddit is in, in terms of the pecking order. It's right up there with Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of those websites. And it's basically forums, right? They call them subreddits and anyone can create a subreddit. You just say, I want to create a, a subreddit. You give it a name and then people can join it, right? Um, yep. Reddit has what? Thousands, tens of thousands of subreddits, forums? I don't know. I don't think they list that. Yeah, they, they have a lot. They have a lot, right? Um, and they have some when you join Reddit. So if you just get the mobile app or you go to the website and you join Reddit, you get a, a default set of subreddits or forums, right? Um, and yeah. so there's this there's this pecking order with inside Reddit where you've got these main re subreddits that basically have most of the viewers, right? They have potentially millions of people that are subscribed to those forums and watch that stuff all the time. So we're sort of in that ecosystem and we're at what? 26, 27,000? I haven't looked recently. It's been going up a lot. Uh, due to all the disclosure stuff. But right. I, so I haven't, I don't know exactly where we're at, but yeah, I think we're in that ballpark, 25 yeah. to 30,000. Which is a lot. Um, but in Reddit terms, it's not necessarily a whole lot because there's other forums that have a lot more. Subreddits have 500,000, 600,000, a million, right? Yeah, UFOs has a mil over a million subscribers right now. Yeah, that's our UFOs, UFOS, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's one so the, where you get a lot of news. And the way that works for people who are new, new to Reddit, you go to reddit.com and then every subreddit has slash R slash before it. So it's like reddit.com slash R slash UFOs or Skinwalker Ranch or et cetera, et cetera. And if you go to R slash all, which is the default, that's where you see the the most popular subreddits that have been curated by the Reddit admins. Right. So at a minimum, we know that the the people that are subscribed to our subreddit, Skimwalker Ranch, they they know that they can subscribe. They know at least that much about Reddit. But I think they don't necessarily know about all the things that are going on with Reddit right now. Uh, you probably know more about this than I do, but basically they've cut off all of the non- Reddit mobile apps and it's caused a stir with moderators. Yeah. Yeah. Reddit made some business decisions recently um, to start charging access to their content for third party apps. And the price they were charging was deemed exorbitant. Um, it's beyond what Reddit themselves is making off their users. It just seemed like it was. It was designed to push out all of the third-party apps, which it did. There are no more third-party apps for Reddit, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and it caused a lot of stink. And a bunch of subreddits went went dark in protest. So they either shut themselves down and went private. Uh, some of them <laughs> filled the subreddits with weird content just to kind of skirt around the rules. There was this sort of back and forth going between the admins and the mods where the admins are like, if you close your subreddit, we're going to reopen it. And they're like, fine, it's open, but now it's just pics of John Oliver. And so that's all they allowed on it. Uh, uh, they've been, it's this weird little game that was going on for quite a while. It's calming down now, uh, but they lost a number of subreddits and, and all the third-party apps. 
one of which I was using, and I was quite sad to see it go. Yeah, I think it's cut off quite a few people, probably too. I, the vast majority of people uh, on Reddit access it via the mobile app, a mobile app. And yeah. who knows how much market share the actual official Reddit app had. But I'm guessing a lot of people were cut off from Reddit because of this. Yeah, a lot left, certainly. Because um, the third-party apps blocked out the ads. And that was why Reddit did this. Um, right, they want, and, they want the ad and, views. Yeah, and then shortly... After they did that, I noticed the number of ads showing up in my feed seemed to go up very dramatically. Um, yeah, and yeah. So now I'm exploring ways of blocking them out using the web interface and things. Um, so it's clunky. So <clears throat> let me tell you how I use Reddit. I use the old version. So the URL for that is old.reddit.com, <laughs> which is the old user interface, which is mostly text. And that's the Reddit that I started using, you know, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago when I started on Reddit. And I, as soon as they did the new UI, I just kept using the old one. So, but that's like maybe five to 10% of the users are using that old web interface, but I use an ad blocker. So I get no ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But a lot of the features I don't have. Yeah. you And you miss out. You know, and you you will sometimes see different things. Like, for example, if you're setting up rules, if you're a mod and you set up rules, you have to do it twice, once under the new interface and once under the old one, or they don't see the same rules, which I learned when people were like, I don't see any rule against that. Oh, okay. Right. So when it comes to the Skinwalker Ranch subreddit that we help moderate, you do most of the moderation. Uh, I do some moderation uh, in the evenings, weekends, that kind of stuff. But you created a FAQ, an FAQ. Yes, which appears in the sidebar. Uh, and people sometimes don't see it there. But we try and keep it updated with all of the things that people are constantly asking, like, what brand of shirt does Travis wear? Why are they always wearing the same clothes? What's up with that 1.6 gigahertz signal? Um, <laughs> well, yeah, why is... People yelling... <laughs> Why is someone called Dragon, right? <laughs> yes. Why did he not know that that blue light was the security light? Which, by the way, it wasn't answered in the FAQ. Yeah, we get a lot of that. So we've got an FAQ. Um, now and, we were... I, and I do want to tell people, like people who come to Reddit who've never used it before and you see our all, um, are, usually hate it because they they see a bunch of stuff they don't want to see, they don't care about, they don't like. That's not the way to use Reddit. What you want to do is you want to create an account, which is free. You don't have to use your real name. You can get a free throwaway email address and then subscribe to the things you want to see. And then if you go to your your feed, your, your home feed, um, all you will see is content from the web from the subreddits you've subscribed to. Now you don't have to see all the other garbage that's on there. You can just see Skinwalker Ranch or UFOs or a combination of all those. That's the way to use Reddit. And yeah, and unsubscribe from everything you don't like. Get, get just unsubscribe from those Reddits. You don't even need to unsubscribe if you if you use your home feed as opposed to our all. Because then you won't even see those. You'll only see the ones you subscribe to. Got it. Got it. Okay. That's great advice. The other thing that we recommend um, is that they join some of these other subreddits, right? Not just Skinwalker Ranch. If they're interested in Woo, if they're interested in these topics, what are the top five that you would recommend? One is our UFOs. Obviously, our oh, yeah, exper and experiencers, right? The one that you moderate. Um, what's next? If you're into that. Um, well, there are a number of ones that are devoted to UFOs, uh, and they all kind of specialize in different things. Um, there's UFO science. There's another one called UFO B, which has got some pretty good content. Um, aliens is another one, which is more focused on who's in the UFOs <laughs> as opposed to the UFOs themselves. Our UFOs is kind of I think of it as like the kiddie pool for UFOs, like when you're first learning how to swim. Um, 
but it's very kind of nuts and bolts. It's mostly focused on people who are like, how do they work? Why do they have lights? You know, things like that. Or people who are like, are they even real? Um, but when you outgrow that, then you start branching out into these other subreddits. Experiencers, you know, is not for everyone, certainly. But we're also, like, we gained thousands of subscribers in the past month. Wow. No. Why is that? Wait, more than that. I think it was more than, I think it was 5,000, actually. Because of what's going on with disclosure right now, with the whistleblower. And everything that's coming out there is... There are new bombshells being dropped every single day. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think I'm exaggerating on that. I mean, I can't believe how much is coming out. It's hard to keep up. Yeah, things are getting really crazy. Um, in terms of Reddit, we had a bombshell this week on the subreddit Aliens. We did. That, that just completely, um, I got sucked into it. I have to admit, I got sucked into it big time because it sort of validated a lot of the things that I'd already read about aliens or greys. Um, but let's, let's do a background and sort of explain what we're talking about here. You want to, you want to explain it? Yeah. Um, so people will periodically post on subreddits and say, you know, I'm doing this anonymously. I'm going to throw away this account when I'm done, but I've got information that I want to share. And in this case, it was somebody who said at some point in the past, he had worked for the government on trying to figure out the genetics of a gray alien. And he said he was shown all kinds of information about them. And he shared a number of things and said, I'm here to answer questions for a little while. And people do this a lot. Most of the time, it, it's what is called LARPing, live action role playing where somebody's pretending to be this, but they're not really, and their story falls apart pretty quick. In this case, the guy went into very technical detail about the genetics, um, and people who had PhDs in genetics responded and said, this is, this is interesting because I can't find any technical fault with what this guy is saying. Like, obviously, they're like, I, I can't verify it's true. I've never seen a gray alien. But the techniques he's talking about is real. The equipment he's talking about is real. It fits in with the time period of when he said he would have been doing the work. Um, and, and for that reason, it got, I think, more attention than any other post like that. And I mean a lot of attention. Like I tweeted about this because I saw it pretty quickly after it was posted and I read it. I was like, this is worth mentioning. So I've, I've mentioned it on Twitter. And all I said is, now, this is an interesting Reddit post. Last time I saw it, that had about 53,000 views. I don't have that anywhere near that many followers. Um, and the people who follow me that do have that many followers didn't retweet it. So I don't know why it got so many views. It was very weird. That post is getting a lot of attention, though. Yeah. And what I found amazing about it is, is basically the setup, the, the, the way he explained it. So basically there's, there's a, a, a third party. It's not a government facility. This is a private biomedical research facility, right? And he actually identified the building, yeah. the address, the location of it on Google map. right? <laughs> yep. And, and says guess that who it, ran it? Exactly. Right. <laughs> yep. Um, and they're in the basement and these are these I think it was four bodies of gray aliens physical bodies that were in freezers fridges right I don't and, remember that detail okay yeah. as I recall they were they were like frozen there were four of them and all of them had died of massive trauma like in a crash these were not fully intact bodies apparently but among the four they were able to learn a lot because these were very, very similar. So he, he gives a location. He gives specifics. He explains that they had these bodies. He was part of, he was part of the direct research or just looked at the data. That was not clear to me. Um, I don't know whether he had hands on or whether he was just reading all of the information that was in there. And I was one, I was curious if you, if you could tell that detail, if you remember I don't I, think he said specifically. Yeah, he didn't say specific. My understanding was 
his analysis was based on what he'd learned and also some kind of a document or some other paper that someone else had written. And he was, he was using that information from that report as well. So it was basically his own yeah. information as well as someone else's. So you got the double stuff there, but for him to say, okay, yeah, this private company has these bodies and we, they were examined. We did some DNA analysis on them. And then he just lists in this massive post specifics, what we learned about their eyes, their ears, their mouth, their nose, their fingers, their toes, their digestive system, the, the heart, the brain. Um, and they just, you know, there's at least a paragraph on each one of these. And then he goes into the genetics of how this thing is genetically, clearly genetically engineered. It, it hasn't evolved naturally on yeah. its own. It doesn't have junk DNA. It's, it's DNA is very compacted and just what it needs. It doesn't have all that spacing in between like ours does. So it's a much shorter uh, DNA, but it's, it's very compact. It's very, you know, detailed for what it needs to have in it to create a, a gray alien. The fact that its brain is like four components that aren't similar to our brain doll, I find very interesting, but it's clearly, it's genetically engineered. It's manufactured. It has no genitalia at all. Um, it doesn't even take a crap. It, 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 it doesn't necessarily eat. It drinks. It drinks some kind of a liquid that's high in carbs and protein and then basically sweats it off as, as sort of ammonia, right? Yeah, although they said it was covered with a, a kind of a thin film that is sort of protective. You know, the way we would have clothing, it's sort of like it's built into the body, um, which, you know, if you cut that, then you, you smell that kind of ammonia stink. And it, so it's worth noting here the um, – oh, what's the term? They're not microbiologists, but they're something – the people who work on the genetic stuff who looked at it said, this is all technically legitimate. Well, for the people who are really familiar with um, you know, the folklore on gray aliens and experiencers and everything, that was also pretty dead-on accurate. Like it's right in line with what people report, what they've been told, the smells, the the way they look, everything. So this guy was either really well informed just on UFOs in general, or he was telling the truth. And even the company. So people were he didn't give the name, but it, you know, he gave all the information. People quickly were like, that's Battelle. Now, for anyone who knows anything about Battelle, they've long been implicated as being the company, for example, that got wreckage from Roswell and developed the memory met metal nitinol, um, where if you heat it, it will go back to its original shape. It can bend it any way you want, you reheat it, and it goes back to that shape. And the records seem to indicate that it was all developed right after Roswell, and Battelle did it. And Battelle's get, they get all kinds of private contracts they're a money pit for the government so anyway so yeah i mean it was pretty convincing uh, i you know at one point i thought wow this looks really real and then you know some people got on there that said they're geneticists and that the terminology didn't make sense and they thought it was a fraud so, so, so there are people that say it's a fraud on there it's, it's an elaborate fraud right they're larping or something like that the other thing yeah. to consider is it could be chat gpt it could be, but people tried to recreate it using ChatGPT, and they couldn't get anywhere close. I mean, ChatGPT is great at repeating stuff, but it, it it's not, you know, you can tell it's not an expert in anything. So that's been ruled out. I think that's been pretty effectively ruled out. Now, in terms of the geneticists, they don't all agree. Some of them say, hey, this is this is all dead on. Other people say, no, nah, no, it's not. This is wrong. This is wrong. But the fact that they're not in agreement on that is questionable. Um, I do believe that if this guy was really telling the truth, that people from the intelligence community would come out and, and you know go to great lengths to discredit it. Now, I'm not a geneticist. I don't. I can't say anything on that. I'm not willing to say it's real or it's not. It's interesting. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, Fairly we're not interesting. Yeah, we're not qualified to say whether it's legit or not or to make a case either way, but 
the fact that it, it dropped like this when it did the way it did and you know the suspicion of running around the guy the username apparently he like his username got deleted and banned right while he was answering questions so he created another account and asked the admins why did you why did you report me and they're like we didn't we have nothing to do with this we don't know why your account was removed uh, and then that account yeah, so, got removed. <laughs> Somebody up high was doing something, right? Yeah, and that's that's something to know about Reddit. So there's users, then there's moderators. Moderators are the people who run the subreddits, and they have a little bit of control. You know, they can kick people out of a subreddit, they can remove posts, things like that. Above that is the admins of Reddit, and they can do things like shadow ban a user. So the user has no idea anything's wrong, but nobody else can see their stuff. And this guy got shadow banned. Now, why would the admins shadow ban him? That's a, that's a big question mark. Um, but yeah, he was shadow banned briefly till the mods figured it out. And then he was unshadow banned, which meant somebody was paying attention. Um, and then his account got deleted or he deleted it himself. Now, that's something we can't determine. He may have pretended his account was getting deleted and he might have been deleting his account. Um, it looked like he was, he was trying to stay on Reddit. He was trying to answer the questions. He was trying to work with the moderators. The moderators were trying to work with him, but just weird stuff was going on between them. And that's yes. the problem with Reddit. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of censorship too. You try to post real news on real news subreddits, it gets deleted. Uh, you get banned from... Yeah. Posting on topic stuff in Reddit. So I've had that happen to me as well. Uh, there's a lot of weirdness that goes on Reddit. The fact that it hit our aliens and was able to stay there long enough to get that kind of attention. It got tens of thousands of views. Um, and it was mentioned on Twitter. And so even if it's not true, so just imagine this, if let's say there really are bodies somewhere, right? And right now we're talking about that there's craft, right? And it's going to be, <laughs> they're going to hold congressional hearings in a couple of weeks about that. Some people don't want to go near the topic of bodies, but if anybody is truly sitting on bodies, let's say this thing is completely fake. The guy totally made it up, right? Well, he's just put a lot of heat on anyone who really does have bodies. Does that make sense? If you're sitting on bodies now and you see this, you're like, oh, it's just a matter of time before it's going to get out, right? It puts tremendous what? pressure on these companies and these people who actually know what's going on, know where the bodies are, <laughs> literally. It yeah. puts a lot of pressure on them, even if it's fake. And I'm sure they were scrambling to try and figure out if there was a leak when this first happened. Like, oh, yeah. is, did this guy, was he really involved? Blah, blah, blah. Um, the guy would have taken huge risks in doing this. Now, I do want to say the main whistleblower said that the government has bodies. Yeah. And that they some of them were from wrecks and were badly damaged. Like it lined up with what the whistleblower said. And I am assuming that is going to be asked about in this congressional hearing that's coming up, which is apparently going to be at least partially public. So whether it's this month or September, some people are saying it might be as far out as September. But we'll see. Sometime soon, we're going to learn more. Yeah. Under oath in front of Congress on camera. I, I, how do you put this toothpaste back in the tube at this point? How do you, how do you, how do you shut this down and just squelch it and move on and not talk about it? I mean, that was a bombshell report and it really captured the imagination of a lot of PhD scientists, right? Yeah. People really engaged with what, what that guy posted. Um, even if it's not legit, it, it completely changes the narrative for a lot of people, right? It gets them talking. It just the descriptions, you know, of what they describe. That's what's so hard to understand. Is the brain is completely different. It has DNA, um, but it, it it doesn't have really. A, it has a nose, but it doesn't really breathe. Breathe. It has lungs, but it, it's you know no genitalia. It doesn't have a voice box. Can't hear very well. It, it's it's not a natural being. It's it's some kind of a drone. Right, it's a biological yes. drone of some kind, and that's been the kind of the folklore for decades: is that these beings are effectively androids. 
that are being custom created as needed for whatever the beings behind it are doing. So well, they right. can tweak it and change it for whatever the need is. Because he said, you know, these things have pupils. They have really big pupils in their eyes. It's like they're adapted to night vision. Um, and they have this film over their eyes. Now, some experiencers had reported that they had seen them without the film over their eyes, just with the big pupils when they were like up on crowd, whatever. Right. So they can, you know, if you need one that has that, you build one with that. Like, I don't know how you build a being. <laughs> Do you grow it? Do you like, don't ask me, um, but they can tweak it and change it as needed. Yeah. I, and yeah, these, these things don't have any way of reproducing. They're, they're not in control of the situation. They're, they're drones. They're, they're biological androids. Like you said, they're not the ones running the show at all. They don't appear to be at all. And, but what we know, I mean, if it's true, if it's legit, we know whatever's behind this is capable of, of genetically engineering something of that sophistication, right? Yeah. It designed this. It has it has genetic capabilities that we're far beyond what we can do. And at yes. the same time, at the same time, the these medical descriptions of the autopsy match up with what people who experience abductions have described all these years. Now it, it could be because this guy aligned with that, but it, it starts to line up and make you feel like it's added a lot of legitimacy to these abduction experiences. You know, we're, I can imagine someone who's seen a gray and experienced that. Now they're reading this description of the body and the autopsy, and they're like, "Yeah, this is this is what I saw." So things are getting really serious, even if it's fake, <laughs> right? Even if it's fake, and we're going to be seeing more of these. Like the next thing, we need to have a metallurgist come out and say, "Oh, I also worked on analyzing the materials from a UFO, and here's all of the technical details on that." And if people keep doing that, it's going to get it's going to get the attention of more and more scientists, and it's going to, as you said, get harder for the government to take the focus away from this. Yeah, and we've also got things coming out through some of the journalists, like Ross Coulthard. Uh, his recent bombshell was one of the UFOs that that is in the possession of you know a private corporation is so big. They couldn't move it. They built a building on top of it to hide it. And he said, multiple people have told me this. I believe it. I think it's true. Um, and it's all going to be coming out and people are going to find it. And so everybody's scouring Google Maps looking for this thing. Um, and they're certainly finding some interesting things out there. Uh, I think the best one I've seen so far was in, I want to say, Greenland. Um, or the or Antarctic, one of those. And it was like, yeah, that's a that's a curious construction. <laughs> and where are the denials? Why 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 aren't there more official denials? It seems like with some kind of these bombshells coming out, if they're not true, the Pentagon has got to come out really strong and say this is absolutely not true, and just you know slam on it hard. And that yet they're not doing that. They're docking the issue. They're telling everybody to just wait and talk, talk to Arrow, which is the official organization that's supposed to be investigating this, although people worry that it may have been compromised and is and is part of the movement to try and cover it up. Um, but yeah, they're telling people, talk to Arrow, talk, even the White House. They're like, talk to Arrow. We don't know. Um, but members of Congress are saying, we've seen enough to convince us that this is legitimate. Some members of Congress are saying this. They're 100% convinced that non-human intelligence is here, that the stories from the whistleblower appear to be true, that it definitely needs investigation. There are some naysayers, but their argument is basically just, yeah, I can't believe it. They don't have any facts. So we got to wait and see. And I do want to say, you know, the skeptics are saying, Where's the evidence? You know, all we're getting is hearsay. And it's like, well, the people who are, have the classified clearances are the ones who are getting to see the evidence. We're not going to get to see that. 
but they're seeing it and they're going, whoa, this needs more attention. And that ought to get people's eyebrows up. Yeah. Yeah. Now I mentioned this to uh, one of my daughters the other day and she, her response was, what does this mean for the average person? You know, you still got to get up and go to work the next day. Right. This stuff, it's start. it's hard to, it's hard to process. Well, I think the biggest thing that it means is that if the government truly has craft in their possession, if they've had any luck reverse engineering them, then it's possible that they've got the the solution to many of the world's problems in their back pocket and for whatever reason haven't been willing to pull it out. But, you know, whatever is capable of powering these things the scientific study that's been done on them is like, look, we could power a country with just one of these things. So, of course, at the same time, you could take that energy and, you know, blow up a country. So, and I'm not exaggerating on that. Like, they're saying, God, if this got under the wrong hands, if this is real, um, you know, it's a doomsday device. And Absolutely. So you can see why the government would want to want to cover this up and and control it but good lord like you know that's all fine and dandy if we think we're the ones in charge of it but what if north korea figures it out or what if russia figures it out well the thing is you've got the actual phenomenon behind it right and if if there's any truth to this this autopsy situation which again (laughs) i have a hard time believing you but if there's any truth to it, it does tell us a lot about what the phenomenon actually is. I think it really tips its hat because we know that the grays are not in charge. So there's some other intelligence behind the grays that's capable of designing them and building them and somehow growing them, right? What What is that intelligence? What is that other entity that's actually running the show? It's not the mantids. It's not the Nordics, is it? It's not. You see what I'm saying? If, if we validate yeah. that the rays are real, what about all the other beings that people see? Are any of them actually behind all this? And I don't think they are. Well, I'll say that the mantids are seen in a supervisory role over the grays. But at the same time, we're talking for people who don't know when I say mantid. People frequently report uh, seeing a humanoid praying mantis. It's got, you know, arms with hands, but it's got the head of a praying mantis. It's got a carapace, you know, two arms, two legs. Um, They wear clothes, but it's a giant insect. Now, what are the odds that that's going to evolve? You know, I think it's pretty preposterous. So makes more sense to me that those are also being built to interact with people. And they're built to look that way uh, or lizard people. Um, you know, we've got the Nordics, which look like beautiful humans. Um, there's a plethora of different beings that are seen. Um, but yeah, are they the ultimate ones in charge or are they just kind of representatives? And people are told frequently by these beings, this is not our true form. But then why do they take those forms? those specific forms. Right, right, exactly. That's the big question is what's going on behind all this? There's there's some there's got to be some ultimate intelligence behind it that's that's engineering all of them and why why so many different ones. The other thing to keep in mind is that gray was like it's like a clone. They think that all four of them were like identical. I think I'm not sure whether that was confirmed or not. But that's what the guy suspected, that they were basically just clones. Right? Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. Um, So this leads more credibility to the unfortunate idea that abductions and hybridization are real. Right? Hybridization. Yeah. It sounds like there is a hybridization program going on, as much as I hate to say that. there, There could be. There could be, or it could be that they want us to believe that there's a hybridization program going on for some reason. Oh, it doesn't. 
it doesn't make a lot of so much of these stories when you really dig into them it's like it doesn't really make sense like why would they need to do that if they're so advanced why would they need our dna we're primitive apes like well fix so it if they can if they can, they can build bodies from scratch right if they can build bodies you know these different alien types could they build a human body well the allegations are that they have even bob Bigelow himself said they're walking among us. They are among us. So did Ingo Swan. Yeah. Yep. Many people have, have this, blamed this. You see how this starts That's to line basis. up? It starts to line up. It starts to tell a, a bigger story that, you know, you say, okay, they're among us. So obviously they've made contact with somebody in the government. I can't believe that would be the White House. I think it's it's looking more and more to me like there was some kind of a, a direct contact made with someone in the government my guess is the police state and i'm i'm guessing this is probably near the end of world war ii sometime in the 1940s when the ufos were seen over washington dc and roswell and trinity happened that there was some kind of direct contact made at that point but they're not going to waste their time on politicians they really want to talk to people that are really in control of the world and that absolutely is the top people at the police state you know, whoever's the top of the police state that's your biggest military in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the world, basically. Who's got the nukes? Who's got the guns? Who's got the power? They need to talk to them, not the politicians, not the bankers. And yep. they introduce themselves and basically say, okay, we're here. Here's what's going on. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what you're going to do, right? And my guess is they agreed both jointly that they were going to do everything they could to keep this under wraps as long as possible. So- you know, on the experience through subreddit where everybody talks about abductions and everything, we have a rule against talking about conspiracies. Um, we tell people, you know, the story is very too much. Um, we, we don't encourage people to buy into a single narrative. We really don't need people talking about the idea of, you know, shape-shifting aliens being in, in government or, or whatever else. Yeah, that's us. ridiculous. Um it, I don't know if it's ridiculous, but I don't want to think about it. Uh, and I don't think it's healthy for us to be focused on it right now because we don't have enough information. Um, but oh, where was I going with this? Because we talked about so much. Uh, give me a second to get my get my thoughts here. Um, so. Uh, what's her name? Diana Pasolka in American Cosmic, which is an excellent book I think people should read. She talks about how there is a faction within the intelligence community and that, you know, when you rank these various beings that this intelligence community is basically right below the aliens or whatever you want to call them, these non-human intelligences, and that they've achieved this basically through the occult believe it or not, uh, using rituals and other things to gain access to esoteric knowledge and communicate directly with these beings telepathically. Those would theoretically be the people in charge. Those would be the people who are trying to cover this up. Those would be the people who have been benefiting from all of the technology, et cetera, that's been reaped here. And they're using it to God knows what purpose uh, to maintain some sort of power or gain power. And I'm like, man, you know, it, this starts turning into QAnon and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's another reason I'm like, I, if you go, if you dig far enough, you're going to get there. Don't, just don't, like, it's fine to read it, <laughs> consider it, think about it. Don't, don't lock yourself into any of that because we just don't have enough information. But I'm not, it's possible. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. we're going to be getting more information at some point, either that or the people are going to dig enough in the government and find out the truth and be like, oh, man, we can't talk about this. And it'll be Project Blue Book all over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I start to see some of these things going down and they're sort of synchronizing up and it sort of implies other things. It implies that there's some kind of a collusion with some people in the government and whatever this phenomenon is there's got to be some kind of collusion there where they've met or they've talked or they're talking or there's some kind of a protocol between them it, it, 
I can't believe that they're not. They've never communicated because the people on the inside know a lot more. They're the ones that have the bodies and the wreckage and right. They've confiscated all kinds of evidence over the last 50 years plus. And so not only do they know more, but they've got to have some kind of a contact, but you're saying that's an occult connection. You think, but well, because you start getting into all of the woo, you know, telepathy, higher beings, um, psychic connections, channeling. So technically it's the occult. Now that doesn't mean it's demonic or demons or whatever. Maybe it is. Maybe those things are real, but you know, you, it, that's not what occult means. It just means hidden. These are things that have been hidden from us. They, people don't want to talk about it. Um, but I'm a big advocate for parapsychology and psi and all of those concepts, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've experimented with them enough to be like, there's something to this and anybody can do it. Um, so, yeah, I believe that there are people who know a heck of a lot more. And you don't really have to dig that far to find them talking about it. You know, Jacques Vallée has talked about it. Even Gary Nolan, you know, our prominent scientist, our grounded, rational guy, has said the woo is just around the corner. You know, I, I think we repeat it every episode because it's important. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist either, but there is a conspiracy. There has been with the U.S. government covering this up. There has been a cover-up, absolutely. But the dam is starting to break. And I think people are going, you know, well, look, I mean, if, if we're peeling back the curtain, I think it's time we all started to come clean and individuals are coming forward. And some of them are doing it, you know, through Congress, and some of them might be doing it through Reddit. Yeah, that could have been totally legit. Uh, the the, the question the question is going to be what happens next. Yeah, whether we get another one of these or we get another one and they actually have the photographs and charts and data. It's not just a narrative, but it's actual you know some raw data in there. And speaking of data, the people that we know that are trying to gather data are at Skinwalker Ranch, and you know we may be getting some bombshells here in the next couple weeks we've got what two two or is it three episodes left this yeah season? yeah i think so we got three episodes left three yeah. episodes yeah. so they're going to deliver on a bombshell right supposedly I, I feel like brandon backpedaled a little bit when he was on with us when we talked to him and he was like yeah i'm pretty excited about it but you know no people aren't necessarily going to need therapy um, unless, you know, they're willing to accept what we're telling them, which is these things are real. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if they're doing something it, it they've got to be, if, if something big is going to happen, they, they, they already know about it. Right. Cause yeah. this was all filmed last summer. So maybe we don't even know it, but they're actually building up to it. Maybe in some of the things we've already seen on the show this season, unknowingly they're building up to something. And so at some point there'll be some kind of an experiment or test or multiple ones where it's like, Oh, right. That correlates with this other stuff they did earlier in the season. Yeah. For example, the burned fence post. Yeah. That people were like, why, what is that? Why does anybody care about that? And it's not like I've got inside knowledge here, but I, my suspicion is that, that is going to be tied into something we're going to be hearing about later. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. They think it's some maybe an orb. Maybe they see some orbs. Uh, yeah, I, I, they seem to be seeing them a lot. I can't imagine someone would put that post up with it already burnt. No. As people have pointed out, when you're building a fence, it's a lot of work. There would be no point in using a piece of damaged wood that might break. I mean, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, at the same time, though, there's been some weird things happening in the season. Um, we had last, the last episode, we had uh, Flygate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, we should talk about Flygate, I guess, shouldn't we? We should talk about Flygate. Uh, that, you know, it, it's weird because it happens in the show and then it happens off the show, even more dramatic, right, on, on Twitter and 
it sort of plays out and it, it's kind of fun to watch. My impression is it got to the point where Brandon sort of backed off and said, well, the jury's still out. There's other ways to interpret this data, right? In the end. Because I asked him flat he out. Did. I, said, I asked him flat out, come on, is this a fly or not? What do you think? And and he said. He didn't reply. Yeah. Directly to that um, post. So for people who, who maybe are wondering what the hell is Flygate, <laughs> uh, in the last episode we saw, uh, Travis got very excited that they captured something on the high-speed camera. And he said, this thing has got to be traveling at 36,000 miles an hour. And then I think later he was like, no, 360,000 miles an hour. Well, before the episode even aired, people were looking at the preview and they went, that thing's got wings on it. That thing's flapping its wings. Um, and sure enough, you slow down that preview and it, it looks like a bug caught on a high-speed camera. Um, and that's what the debunkers promptly trotted out. And they were like, why the hell are you guys showing us what is clearly a fly? And why did Travis think it was not a fly? Like, why would he fall for that? Um, and then the way the show was, was edited, uh, it was less prominent in the episode than it was on the preview, which, of course, made people suspicious. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Brandon said, look, this is why we put this stuff out there is because we want it. We're crowdsourcing to some degree. Like Travis is not the ultimate arbiter on everything here. He's he's good at his job, but people make mistakes. And, you know, um, but we don't know all of the information because we only see the stuff that's shown on the show. Um, but it I mean, it it was embarrassing, I think. It was well, cringy for me. Yeah, I, the mod on the on the subreddit. I was no, like, we have, well, we t- we take look. some of the seat, don't we? We and this actually ends up hurting us a little bit because we have to deal with all the people on the Reddit, on the subreddit, right? That are that are going off on it, and I, it looked like a fly to me. Yeah, and we're certainly not keeping anybody from. Matter of fact, I pinned the post that was talking about that for a while. I was like, you know, let's have the discussion here. We need to talk about this. Uh, we're not hiding any of that stuff. We're just telling people, look, you got to be respectful. Like you can't just be like the whole thing is BS and everybody's lying and it's all fraud. I'm like, well, no, but I think you could say Travis, you know, seemed to be misinformed on this. <laughs> I think that's a reasonable judgment. Well, what, what I what what it looked like to me was they're out there in the field. They've got the camera on, and then they see something, and they they quite often will just jump to a conclusion. They'll say that's a UAP and it's going thirty six thousand miles an hour. It's like, hold on, why don't we spend more time, you know, really thinking about this? Why didn't they see the wings? Now, again, it may not have been a fly. I, I'm not going to argue that it was a fly. It just it looked to me like a fly. We're not the experts, right? And supposedly the experts wouldn't have gotten something like that wrong. But my impression was the whole thing just happened. It just happened. Literally, it happened on the fly. <laughs> it happened in the moment, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it did. And they asked the guy who runs the camera, because he's the expert, is that a bug? And the guy said, I don't think that's a bug. The depth, you know, it's the depth of field, blah, 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 whatever. So they were using his judgment on this, which is what you do, right? You consult with the experts. Even they consulted with the expert in the moment. And they were like, wow, that made, that is something other than a bug. Now, later they came back and went, well, maybe it was a bug, you know? Um, right, right. You know, I got to hand it to Mick West on this one on, on Twitter. Mick West, he, <laughs> he, he got all the videos and lined them up and showed the whole thing. And I'm like, mm, this is kind of embarrassing. It is, you know, yeah, Mick West. I mean, he's really good at his analysis. Um, He's, you know, the way he handles it is a little, like he could have just asked once and gotten a response and left it, but he kept bringing it up over and over and over again, you know, um, kind of beating a dead horse on that. Uh, I think he was really out to embarrass Brandon and the guys, which is yeah. petty. It's very petty. Um, and, and they're making a big deal out of that. And, and and then they just ignore the rest of the episode. I know. And that's, that's one of the other things. You can't focus on a single piece of data and throw everything else out because of that. 
that's not good analysis you know right and, and, but and we're and, not getting all of the we're not getting all the data we're getting some of the data which is great like i'm so grateful for the show because otherwise we wouldn't know any of this stuff going on at skinwalker ranch and some of it is is really weird yeah. uh, and i think you know we know we're going to be hearing more weird stuff before the end of the season and i'm sure they're going to leave us with the cliffhanger i'm sure uh, they will well they're beyond, filming I'm they're sorry. Filming go ahead. The next season. They, they've now? started filming. They've started filming, and it's July. They're filming next season. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you were going to say something about um, Beyond Skinwalker Ranch. I was. You know, I was going to say I. I really kind of want to see these shows merge together a little bit. Um, because I I really like the way they're analyzing stuff on Beyond Skinwalker Ranch. I'm sad that those are only limited to an hour, because I think they really do a good job of kind of saying this is mysterious but by the time they've established that they don't have any time to finish it off whereas with skinwalker ranch they start off with this is mysterious but they don't tell us why they came to that conclusion and sometimes we go uh, i don't know that was a faulty conclusion but we know that they're basing it off information that they have that they've accumulated over years or Travis is basing it off stuff that he saw when he was had access to classified information at the UAP task force, which has convinced him that orbs are probably flying all over Skinwalker Ranch. Um, I don't know. It's complicated. It's complicated. It really is. <laughs> there's a lot going on out there. We're only in the first week of July, and there's a lot more coming up this summer. I still think that there's a big disclosure out there. I think it's building up. I think uh, there's some forces behind it that are not necessarily planning it, but are monitoring it, edging it on a little bit. Coordinating. To some coordinating. Point. There you go. That's yes. the word. They're coordinating. Yes, yes. Lou yes. Elizondo said he's in D.C. right now. He was just in England for some reason. He was in London. Now oh. he's in D.C. Um. We know he's been behind the scenes trying to get the government to take this seriously. Um, and I know he's not, you know, making public. He's not out in public the way he was before, but he's absolutely still behind the scenes working on stuff. And I wow. think it's worth paying attention to what's going on there. Yeah, yeah. But I agree with you. I think something big is coming. Now, We've also got what's going on with um, Avi Loeb. Mm, yeah. Have you been following that? Just a little bit, a little bit. You know, uh, from what I understand, he's got some material that he found under the ocean from a craft. He thinks it was from something uh, created. Yes, that it was not natural. Um uh, an interstellar object as determined by NASA. I don't know who some space agency determined that this thing was definitely interstellar, not from our solar system. And it crashed into the ocean and he went there and now he's pulling up tiny little spheres. And he says the composition of these things is, is very anomalous. So he's concurrently saying, Hey, I think we have evidence of, non-human intelligence and wouldn't it wouldn't that just that's be an asteroid happening completely separate but wouldn't no, that be just an asteroid now he's saying that the materials that are in these things don't make sense and that some of the other debris he found something that looked like a wire said doesn't there's no reason for that thing to be there i don't know enough about the science to understand why he's making these claims but he's pretty good at his job he's pretty well respected and he's going to be publishing papers for peer review so oh, absolutely we're be hearing a lot more about this people are already saying he's wrong but they haven't seen the data so i don't know i don't know why they're so sure he's he's wrong yet i no, i think just in terms of the disclosures stuff you know i really encourage people to stay on top of that because the story is changing so quickly right now, and more and more things are coming out. The guy to watch is Ross Coulthart. Mm, yep. Because he's got 
so many fantastic connections right now in the defense and intelligence communities and people really trust him and so they're going with going to him and talking about things and he's a respected journalist who's going to check his sources and you know and make sure they're trustworthy before he's going to listen to what they have to say so either he's being played by a heck of a lot of people or this dam really is breaking and and it's just kind of a flood right now of people coming forward saying it's time i told what i know yeah the whistleblowers are coming out of the woodwork now absolutely and they're talking to reporters like him so i guess that's the best place to to really start to focus on this to find out what's going on get the latest news wouldn't you say that's on twitter probably ufo twitter probably the best where do you get your news yeah uh, UFO Twitter is where it breaks first, um, and then it will eventually end up on Reddit, usually on our UFOs. Um, I often go to our UFOs and sort by new as opposed to by top posts or best. Mm -hmm. You can sort by different methods. Sorting by new, you see all the stuff that comes in. A lot of it doesn't get traction or it gets deleted or whatever, but occasionally you'll see something before anybody else notices it. Um, and sometimes it, you know, it'll take you to a, something before it gets deleted, which is another thing that's happening a lot right now is something is getting shared and then it's getting deleted from Twitter or Reddit or mm -hmm. wherever YouTube. And people are like, I don't know if that was legitimate or not. There wasn't enough time to to dive into it. So if you see something interesting, save it. Take a screenshot, <laughs> print it, you know, take a photo of the screen if you have to. Um, record it on your phone. Yeah, definitely get the screenshot. I've had to do that more than once where something interesting got deleted and I had to prove it existed. Yeah, and if you're looking for stuff that's been deleted off the internet, archive.org. You can go to the Wayback Machine. You can type in a URL. And it'll show you all of the snapshots it has through time. And you can go back to a specific date if it's in there and pull it up. And you'll get at least the text from the page, sometimes images. You won't get videos, unfortunately. But yeah, you can once, find lost stuff that way. Yeah, yeah. You can't find YouTube videos. Once they're deleted, they're gone, unfortunately. There is one more thing I wanted to talk about, actually. Speaking of that. Um, you know, I used to use Google as my search engine because it, it's the best. But when you're searching for UFOs or controversial topics, uh, Google suppresses information very effectively. And so I had switched to DuckDuckGo as my search engine. They also don't track you. Um, but they had a lot of stuff that Google was not showing. Well, just relatively recently i've noticed that things aren't showing up on duckduckgo either related to ufos so i had to switch to another search engine um and i i cannot remember the name of it it begins with e but it's built into ios on the iphone if you go into the safari settings it's one of the default options you can choose it begins with e it's got an odd name um i've been using that and i've been getting really good results finding things an example, there was a video from Jacques Vallée talking about physical and non-physical contact experiences. If you even go on YouTube and you search for this thing and it's on YouTube, it doesn't show up. It's even, there, but you can't find it in the search. Even in the YouTube search. Even in the YouTube search. Now, keep in mind, YouTube is owned by Google and Google's been hiding all this stuff. But you do a search on this search engine and it's the top hit it comes right up. Otherwise, you really have to dig to find it. You can find it, but it's hard. It doesn't, it, they don't make it easy. That's good to know. So I guess that's it for me this week. All right. That's it for me. Um, great. Let's, uh, let's keep this going. Definitely. Well, we will. We've got more people coming. We've got them in the pipeline. Um, we're going to get them scheduled and, and we've got some interviews in the works. The holiday slowed us down a little bit, but stay tuned. Yep. 
We're not done yet.